this computer. Okay, so I'm Kirsten. I've got Debbie Romero here today, and I'm getting the lesson um, mm -hmm. from my favorite Alexander Technique instructor. So I don't think in this particular video, we should take the time to introduce the whole Alexander Technique concept. I'm just going to say it is for people what I work on when I work on horse balance for horses. So this work that Alexander Technique really helped me as a rider, helped me in my, day, in my different physical issues. Um, and the, the theory of it is pretty much what I'm teaching about horse balance, but it's for humans. Alexander Technique is for humans and what I teach is the horse balance. So today we're gonna do an experimental Zoom lesson because on Zoom, I was okay, horrified. I'm like, oh my God, I look way older than I feel on camera. <laughs> and I had this going on all the time. I think it was this, no, it was this way. That one. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wow, I tilt my head a lot to the right. I didn't even know I was doing that until I had to see myself. And what might be cool about this format is we have a mirror. Mm. So as you guide me through stuff, I can actually see in real time what I look like, which I know is not going to be what I feel like. Good chance. Yeah. <laughs> Good chance. But there it goes again. There it goes. Yeah. Yep. So, so where, where do you want to start? Like, I don't have any particular issues. Um, what you did with me over the weekend while I was there, I have an entirely new relationship with my legs. Okay. I'm walking differently and I'm finding I don't have to contract my psoas to walk. This Good. is brand new territory for me. Good. And I feel like I have a little bit of a swishy walk now. So maybe you found by releasing your psoas that you have found some of your spirals. Is that, yeah. Yeah, so that's when you start to feel um, the movement, more movement in your pelvis when the psoas, which is a major hiker of the hip, but we tend to use it as a postural muscle um, to support the pelvis. And that's when we get into trouble of having the thought, or you've probably seen it in some riders that their pelvis is actually connected to their legs. Instead I'm not of... sure exactly what you mean by that. I think I understand it. It's a, almost like a too much flexion in the hip joint when they connect the leg to the pelvis, would you say, or more extension. Like to me, when you say that, I'm thinking when the legs are independent for a rider, the hip joint is more in extension than stuck in flexion. Completely. That's what you're going to see. Um, you'll especially see it when people get on. And if they just get on and let their legs hang, when they go to pick up their stirrup, they're usually using that psoas muscle to move the, the leg. And when they put the foot in the stirrup, they stay there in that contracted state. Right. Instead of letting the hip joint open again and the psoas relax. Exactly. Or lengthen, I guess, yeah. rather than shorten. Yeah. So you can see that in the riding or you can feel it actually, that gripping of the thighs to maintain balance. The inward closing. Yeah. The inward closing of the thighs is showing that that rider in that instance has is stabilizing its pelvis by using its legs and its psoas instead of releasing the legs and finding postural tone through the axial skeleton from the head neck back and pelvis as one unit right so i think th <clears throat> that's what i see the most of in riders yes. is the disconnect that from the waist down is legs. And from that's- You mean yes. from the top of your pants? Yes, from the top of your pants down is the connection. But truly, if you put your hands right now in the crease of your pants- The front or the back? Front. 
<laughs> Not the coin slot. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you think about it, if your feet, are your feet flat on the floor? No, I'm in, a, interestingly, I have a high kitchen table, which is also my office table. Okay. And when I sit in these chairs, my feet don't touch the floor. It's like so, on the top. So what could, is it possible if you rearranged yourself on the chair to have your feet on the floor? If you move to the edge of your chair? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, if I sit on the very edge of the chair. Yeah. My so floor. this is one of the mistakes that I see over and over again is we forget that we have choices on how we sit in a chair or how we sit in our saddle. Well, in the chairs, the kitchen table I have is like a high top at a restaurant. So yeah. my feet, if I sit in the chair, my feet are like six inches from the ground. It's not whether I'm sitting a little, like I have to really just sit on the edge of the chair, the chair. To get me, my feet on the ground. Okay. But interestingly, I think that changed the way I look. Exactly. Oh, you're so sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> so when we, um, so I'm thinking bar stool, everybody can get a picture of a bar stool in their head or when we sit in a chair and we tuck our feet up into the chair, that is an initial clue that we are trying to balance by locking our psoas. So if we can get our feet on the ground, you automatically see you get the support you need. From, Both your, from your feet and not just your, your butt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I would compare to, and correct me if I'm wrong, is when you're on a saddle to correlate yourself to gravity, not to the chair. Right. So if I go back and sit in the chair, like I have to, there's a little bit of a footrest. Right. I sit in the chair the way it's designed. Yeah, what do you notice about how I change to you visually if I'm sitting and as soon as I sit like this, my head starts tilting. Yeah. <laughs> then if I move the chair back and I sit on the edge with my feet on the ground, my head quits like wanting to go here and there. Yeah, because you have full support all the, by using, whether you want to call it an opposition reflex, which riders seem to really love to use. You've got the opposition of gravity of the floor, and that gives you information up your legs, into your seat bones. Your psoas can release so that your central nervous system goes, ah, there we are. Yeah, there's my relationship to gravity. Yes. Rather than sort of wrapping myself into the chair, which obviously was making me unstable enough that my head was tilting a lot. Or I just do that. I'm not sure which. And I, I can't see your legs, but you may be torquing your torso when you sit the other way with your feet tucked. You know, ever so slightly, maybe one direction, which makes me want to cock my head. Mm. To right. do the, the vestibular apparatus wants to be level. Right. Which is the eyes, ears, and all the fluid up in here that say, just keep this puppy level and we'll, when we're good. Right. Right. So it was really clear in the pictures I shared at the last meeting where the rider's seat was super out of balance, but they didn't know it because from the shoulders up was actually straight. That's where the body's going to compensate because at that point, that rider doesn't have the knowledge of how to use correct postural tone in the axial skeleton. Right. To, for a little alarm to go off and go, oh my, you know, I'm tilting. I need to shift weight and not contort my body. Right. To, to manage the forces that are coming up underneath me. But the instinct and the quick response is contort your body. Now my eyeballs are good. We're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm level. I'm straight. Right. And right. there's the deception um, because we are so visual. 
Um, There's so many proprioceptors in the inner mm -hmm. ear and the eyeballs. There's a huge amount of proprioception going on in the balance of the head. So, but we have proprioception in every muscle of the body. Right. We have proprioceptors, but the, the ears, inner ear and the eyeballs are kind of the main clusters. So I'm curious, as we're just sitting here talking, and I can take my hat off if you want. I've been working all day, so I'm dirty. But um, <laughs> as you, like for you to work with somebody in this format, mm -hmm. do you see things? Or how would you guide me to make improvements or, or build awarenesses? Yeah. So there's, there's several different angles to look at this. Um, one is to ask yourself a question where else do I seem a bit easy? We tend as humans to focus on the tension or the negative, but I'm wondering if we shift our thought process to, well, where's an easy place? And just keep looking for those easy places. Mm, like the horses. Yeah, yeah. So we look for our uh, unfortunately, our attention usually goes to the tension or the pain, and we recognize that. Could we shift the paradigm and have it go to, well, where do I seem a bit easy? And you don't want to say, where do I feel? Because there's a difference between feeling and sensing. What do you mean? So the feeling could be a, a muscular motor situation of tension we can go to that or muscle release or no tone but the sense of feel or the, just where do i seem a bit easy gives the brain the ability to check everything and not it could be the breath it could be something totally different than a muscular effort oh gotcha so, so you're expanding your awareness with that question Right. Rather than looking for the tight spot here or the tight spot right. there. Got it. Yeah. So with this... And my body responds to that question pretty rapidly. So could you, yeah, could you share where you seem a bit easy? Um, where I feel the easiest was actually maybe because I'm resting my hands on the table, but it was sort of my shoulders. Okay. Then, oh, so I'm efforting I, by comparing it with where I felt easy. Um, I took a deeper breath and where I was struggling a little was in my low back, which I always do when I sit. I hate sitting. It's very uncomfortable for me. Okay. More comfortable with my feet on the floor, like we've been doing. Yeah. And then with my arms, sort of my forearms are resting on the table and I'm going, oh, so my upper body feels supported. My lower body wasn't feeling supported. Yeah, that's, that's chairs. So with chairs, the main thing is get your feet on the floor. Keep your feet on the floor if you can. Yeah. Rearrange yourself, put pillows behind you, whatever you need to do to make that happen. And even if you can get your thigh bones higher or your hip higher than your thigh bones so that this is your pelvis and your thigh bones are falling towards the floor, that's even better. That's the nice part I was just realizing of having a high top table and chair. Yes. When I move to the edge, I actually feel more like I'm in a riding position. My thighs yes. are coming down quite a bit, but I'm literally on the edge of the chair. And I go, but it's not uncomfortable. No, because you've got the support of the floor. Yeah. So let's play a little game. Um, since you, you mentioned low back, sometimes it's not comfortable when you're sitting. See if you can just ever so slightly push into the floor with your feet and just bring your belly button into your back. Interesting. It made my feet more connected to the floor. Yes. So that is information uh, saying how much we pull up uh, and don't release down. 
So that's a game everybody can play is feet on the floor, little bit of pressure onto the floor with your feet, bringing your belly button back. That releases your psoas and sitting. Yeah, and it feels like a riding position. It feels a little bit mm -hmm. like going towards two point, which yes. I love that feeling because my feet get to push forward, my hands push forward, and that always gave me great relief on my low back. Yes. I love that feeling of letting my lumbar lengthen and my sacrum lengthen and putting, putting more pressure in the feet. Yes. I, oh, I could do that off a horse. Who knew? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the only other um, thing I'm, I'm noticing about you is because we have corresponding curves, so the lumbar low back curve corresponds with the cervical curve could we check in yeah with this up here saying well if my low back is is talking to me well what's going on at my neck mm. so just take one of your hands and place it on the back here yeah so how does that adjust your eyeballs. Um, I can feel how much it's pulled forward. Yes. And when I straighten it, I feel like I have to look up with my eyeballs. Very good point. So what we tend to do as humans is move our head and move at like C3, C4, which is not the place we're supposed to move from, instead of moving our eyes. Ah, so we forget we have the capability of moving our eyeballs quite a bit without interfering. Because I can't a, see myself in this moment. Does it look like I'm looking up or does it look like I'm looking straight? You're to me what I'll, I'll tell you what I, I sense. I sense you're pushing back on the floor, tightening your psoas and leaning back a little bit. So bend at your hip a little bit and come forward. Yeah, there. Mm. See how that changed your eyes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that little bit of what we would call riding on your pockets. Well, it's funny because when my eyes went up, I wanted to lean back. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so, um, so so ask the question, well, okay, this isn't working. And you might not have been able to sense it in your own body. I could just see it. Mm -hmm. So always, like with horses, be curious enough to say, well, what happens if I bend from my hip a little bit? Right. Yeah, just that little bit. I can see the ease down through your neck and into your shoulders. Yes. And your head is writing itself. Instead of being like back and down, it's come to here. Yes. And it, it doesn't have to be that big of an adjustment. You know, it's No, just, it's not. And I'm thinking a little bit as I'm feeling this, I'm thinking a little bit about the question that came up in the group with horses the whole idea of sort of flexing the jaw, flexing the pole left and right to release the tension in the TMJ pole, pole, um, the occiput axis relationship. And I go, I'm finding it's a whole body thing. That I didn't just change my neck, although that was part of it, but it was a whole body thing. And my neck, my head finds a better place, not by sort of going here directly. Exactly. And, it, and being that we're vertical instead of horizontal makes a big difference. And maybe you can make that translation into horses. I mean, it's the, we're still looking for the forward and up. I mean, but what I'm experiencing is, is sort of my intuition about working with horses is I don't monkey with that head neck relationship directly right. with the horse. I go, I look for, 
if it's tight there and it's not in balance, it's because somewhere else in the body isn't doing its job. Exactly. Because the head is not meant to hold the tension or the neck. Right. But it will, as a, as a stabilizing use, as needed. Exactly. So if we, if we look at what I was playing with there is how do we stabilize your whole spine? Right. And like you said, I'm noticing a little bit of back and down, this kind of thing, and I'm exaggerating. Yeah. And that's bringing you back and that creates the tension. So we come forward a little bit and it's like, oh, that's different. Yeah. So when that's I put different. my hand here and I straightened, it felt better. I was there directly, mm -hmm. but I sort of ended up leaning back. And exactly. I found kind of the alignment through my whole torso and thought of lengthening the neck. I had the greatest amount of ease. So that's really, it's what you've been saying all along about working with horses is we need to find that in our own body. Where is the easy place? Right. Where is it less effort? Yes. And even that thought, it's like I take a deep breath whenever that is spoken out loud because it's like, oh yeah, instead of bracing for the struggle, what about using my energy to search for the ease? Exactly. And what it did is it took your, I don't know if you realize this, but what I saw is um, you expanded your field of vision to your periphery. Mm. As soon as you found the head, neck, back and pelvis connection, you went from kind of this look and you came here and that's kind of the central nervous system kicking in going, yeah, there, that's better. <laughs> Yeah, and the, breath, the breath came too, because I go, I've had a busy day, I'm watching the clock, and it's like that, you don't realize how you're sort of like ticking through your day, and the tension can just be building, building, building. And as I'm stopping and pausing and thinking about it longer, just everything feels easier. And what's interesting is, I don't know if you can hear it, your voice has changed. That'll be interesting to play it back. Although yeah. I, can't, I can't stomach my own voice on <laughs> audio. I, I just have a really good time listening to my own voice. Well, when you... When what's you, interesting is because I have the visual of the Zoom, I'm going, I look like I'm more rested, I guess would be... Because I can see sometimes when I'm tired and I show up on Zoom, I'm like, oh, yeah, that look. Yeah, it, because I'm, I really think once we find whatever balance, postural, healthy postural tone we find at this moment, the central nervous system responds immediately and says, ah, oh, thank you. That's easier. And all the wrinkles go out of your face. It's amazing. <laughs> Ones, right? yeah. So, yeah, so finding that, and, and, and it's never a position. It, as you know, it's a constantly changing thing. It's never static. It's always asking the question, where do I find more ease? Yeah. Yeah, that is it. And can you see the difference in me as I'm doing it? I, I personally can. Yeah. Um, I don't see the strain and the strain. Well, you've, you've done this before. So go back and, and go way far back and see what happens. Let me go back to where I started. And yeah, go back to where you started. You have new information now, but let's see what pops so this up. This is how I usually sit at the meeting. I'm sitting up a little bit, but my feet are off the ground. Ooh, and, and this just got very wrinkly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stop that. No. <laughs> stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Well, what was interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I started you, leaning forward. Yeah. I was pushing back in the chair. Yeah. So I started compensating. That effort came back into my body. Exactly. <laughs> now let me find the new place. 
Yeah, and the upper, the cervical to lumbar relationship is really interesting. Yeah, so those are the corresponding curves. So you know if you're struggling with one of those curves and you're not able to talk to it at that time, go to the other curve and say, well, what can I play with? How can I find the easy place in my lumbar? And usually that's going to refer back up to the neck. Mm. Or vice versa. Or vice versa, wherever, you know, we sometimes get fixated on the problem place. So just shift that to, well, where's the easy place? Where, where mm. do I find the ease? And keep looking for the ease. And it usually goes everywhere at that point. It is kind of everywhere. It's like all of a sudden, my mind doesn't feel quite so scattered or foggy. Mm -hmm. And my breath came back in. So it was very interesting because it was like just kind of a clear, clearer, calmer feeling. I like, go, oh, my day hasn't changed, but how I feel about it just changed. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see it in the softness. And like you said, whatever you want to call that, the softness in your face. Yeah. Um, it makes a huge difference when we start to get closer to you know, that real easy, happy place that the central nervous system is wanting from you. Yeah. And just the thought of look for more ease. Mm -hmm. Keep looking for more ease. Because I yes. think I thought of the Alexander technique the same way I thought about working out at the gym, that there's a right form and I need to find mm -hmm. it. And as long as I was thinking that way, it was pretty elusive. Yeah, you can't find it there. Yeah. <laughs> not there and it's not the same for everybody no it's, it's an experience that brings ease and more ease when you get better at it but it has to start with ease and that was my big epiphany working with horses was there's no muscling your way through it, it exactly has to be ease on top of ease on top of ease on top of ease and i go yes. it's also more enjoyable Yes, it is. Cool. Anything else we can do in this? Like you can look at the head neck balance and talk about the whole body, but is there anything else you want to experiment with that you would do in a lesson, <clears throat> hands on, that we could play with here? Yeah, we can. Um, I don't know if we can come from the side, but maybe let's play from the front and see what happens because, um, I'm, I really like people to get very familiar with, you know, the whole spine is one unit. It moves as one. You know, there's nothing below your bra strap that you're supposed to bend. Uh, and there's nothing, you know, this is not, this is a back and down compression of the spine. So realizing that, you know, your spine is way up here. And not only that, it's closer to the middle of your body. I think we lose. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Yeah, because I always, you feel the bones in your back. And we tend to think of the spine towards the back half mm -hmm. of our bodies. But really, especially the lumbar are really central. Very deep, very deep towards the front. So I think if we think of the, the actual bodies of the spine, because the spinous processes, like you said, in your back aren't really influencing your uprightness. It's the bodies of the vertebrae that are. So finding that, you know, you're, you go all the way down to your sit bones, that is your entire spine, and that should be moving as one thing. So we can play with it front to back, and then if we want to play with it, looking at it from the side. And of course, that always goes into chair work at some point, but we don't have to do that. <laughs> you're not, I'm your not. game, she's game. So the, the game I like to play is what we started with, with the hand on the back of the neck. And see if you can find just your yes joint that way. So it's up really high, your yes joint. And can it, all you want to do is ask yourself, is it available? Is it just available? Am I locking it back and down? 
to look at the screen. Not very many people are overextended this direction. It doesn't happen very often, but just is it available? And then take your other hand and put it in the, the front crease of your pants. Sorry. Okay. Where the hip and joint. their hip joint. So, and your hip joint, your hip socket is not on the outside of your leg. It's deep on your inner thigh, inside your pelvis. So that's how deep the socket, that's where your sit bones are. Your right. sit bones aren't way out on the side, they're, they're inside. Yeah, so can I move from there without disrupting anything in between? Yeah. It's tricky. Is, can you put some words to that? Is there a body part that wants to move first? What I feel is what we just worked on, which was kind of the relationship of the lumbar curve and the back of the neck. I'm finding my, just before I begin the movement, I'm contracting the muscles of the spine downward, like extension. I'm going into extension in order to move. Yes. So yes. I'm thinking now, can I, can I invite it into length and then move? So you could try the game we started with, which is push your feet into the floor and bring your belly button back and then ask for the movement. Yeah, and I was particularly aware of the muscle fibers shortening. And so even with my feet, and even though I'm sort of familiar with this move, I went, well, that was interesting. What if I still do everything you're saying and invite the muscles to lengthen as I come forward? That's different. That's hugely different. Hugely yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. And I feel more stable. Yes. If I do it that way, I actually feel the separation of my legs from my pelvis and I feel more stable, like I could go farther. Yeah. Where before, I think my, I'll exaggerate it, but my habit was if I'm going to lean forward, I did this in order yes. to lean forward. Yeah, so there's extension. Yeah, that's extension. That's extension right there. So instinctual. I go me and my rab, okay? But to, to just add the thought without the gesture of trying to lengthen the muscles, right? Like, like that. But just the invitation to not shorten. Yeah, so the pausing and inhibiting, if I give you the stimulus of, I want you to bend forward, pause and inhibit the movement and look for a different level of organization before you move. So the pause and the inhibition, inhibiting the habit is the most important thing, especially since you found what your habit is. Well, once you find it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, once yeah. you find it. Because there's always layers. Very much so. I go, I didn't know I did that until just a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but that's a- I realized I did it because of what we were talking about with if you're struggling in the lumbar you can look to the neck or the neck mm -hmm. to the lumbar and feel it as one unit um suddenly i was aware that i was contracting in the neck and the lumbar in order to move forward and i'm sure horses do that all the time oh i think bodies do it yeah just bodies in general yeah. And it would be interesting from your point of view to see, well, is that a psoas lockup in a horse? Because that's what that's actually is. the back muscles themselves. It is. It's like I the erector spinae. It. Almost like, yeah, like the multifidus or the spinous erectus or something mm -hmm. very close to the bone is where I was contracting. Okay. Okay. Because I go, I felt my vertebra move out of place with mm. the thought of leaning forward. And I went, ooh, that's not necessary, but obviously that's the way I do it. Right. So the, the question would be, you know, is this something I do when I ride? Uh, you know, who knows? 
Me and too. you don't have to answer it. It's just a question to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. If, um, cause we're always talking about, can I possibly give an aid without shortening? Right. Don't know. That's, that's Part a huge two. question. If we're not consciously aware, then the answer is instinctually no. Mm -hmm. Instinctually, we're always going to shorten. I go, I think it takes more conscious control mm -hmm. to not shorten or to find things in length. And that's what these little games we can play off the horse to start keying ourselves in and our thinking like, ah, I can practice some of these little tools off the horse, maybe at my desk, maybe in conversation or whatever. In Zoom meetings. In Zoom meetings, we could practice. Yes. <laughs> Pausing and inhibiting the habit of, you know, when I bend forward or, you know, this habit or all of those things that we subconsciously just do. Yes. Yeah. What is it I read that we can't progress faster than the speed of our own conscious awareness? Mm -hmm. There's the speed limit. I hate it. <laughs> but yeah, until it's very difficult to inhibit and make a change until, and it's the same thing when you're working with a horse uh, out of balance. I actually had a client this morning who felt these amazingly good steps of balance on her horse. And I go, if you never felt that, how would you know how to yeah. guide your horse? Yeah. And that's where I know the Alexander technique is better hands on, but I'm sure that there's a lot, like I think my voice is different, I feel better, I feel more at ease, just with the few changes we made. And again, I'll look at it when I ride too. Yeah, I mean, it's great to, you know, and there's some circum, you can't find it everywhere. You know, it's um, when you start looking for it, you get yourself into trouble. <laughs> so don't look for it to be a certain place because um, it's not going to be there. It's going to come up other places. What's pretty funny is like, okay, there I go again, right? So when I saw my head tilt, I tried to fix it here. Just like we do with horses, with the reins or the flash <laughs> or the draw reins or the whatever. It's like we see the problem here, but the problem wasn't here. No, it's not I've there. I've been doing these regular Zoom meetings now for almost two months. And I go, for two months, I've been trying to get my <laughs> head right. But it's a mirror image, so it isn't what you feel like isn't what it looks like. So I would see myself do this, and the first thing I would do was that to correct it. Yeah, it's, it's in the correction we get more in trouble. So if we just look at, are my feet on the floor? Right, but our instinct, even my instinct, mm -hmm. as much as I've studied this and worked on it, I go, my instinct was fix your head, Kirsten, without <laughs> really rethinking, are my feet on the floor? You know, mm -hmm. what's my lumbar? doing? What's my cervical spine doing? How could I rearrange my support system? Yes. Because the tilting of the head was a response to that. Exactly. But yeah. It's as a beginner rider. I was going, put your head the right way. And I, I was struggling <laughs> with it for two months. And I'm like, <laughs> now if I think about my overall balance, I there look you go. and my head straight. And your voice changes, your breath changes, everything just falls into place after that. Interesting. One at a time, but all together. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and you can only realize so many things at once. I go, exactly. It, we all have a speed limit to how much we can digest at any one time. So I agree. We just keep going further, but we can't beat ourselves up about it. And I just realized as I start talking, I go back to the old habit. Damn it. I can <laughs> Damn it. It was sneaking back in. Ah. <laughs> and, and maybe that's, I'm so proud of you for us finally getting to this place of working together when we're talking or doing something, because that's always a struggle when you're teaching. That goes out the window. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's very hard to maintain the same level of self-awareness and speak. That's really yes. difficult. And that's still a work in progress for me as a teacher. It showed up in my case study videos where I had a microphone and I was teaching while I was writing. But with that split focus, when I went back and looked at some of the video and the photos, I went, wow, Kirsten, you were really getting shoved off the left side of the saddle and you didn't, you weren't aware of it. And why yeah. wasn't I aware of it? Well, probably because I was busy thinking in my head and talking and it's very difficult. It's that split attention <laughs> to be able to stay present with the feeling and communicate. But yeah, yeah. I was like, the more I talk, the more I go back here. Ah! I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good though. You corrected or you, you went into the habit, you noticed you were there and you went, oh, I have a tool now to get myself out of that. Yes. A so, feeling, yes. A feeling I can come back to. You can say, oh, you know, play with some thoughts, some feet on the floor, bending at the hip, maybe put a hand here to see what I'm doing. Well, do um, you notice too, or is it a thing like I see with the horses? that every time, no matter how well or how poorly the session goes, when I make changes with a horse, because it feels better, I often notice that the horses, when they go back to their old habit, they start to self-correct faster and faster. Just like I noticed, because we worked on it, when I started talking, I went, what's that feeling? where before that feeling was there all the time. So I didn't notice if it was better or worse. But having the feeling gone then helped me notice my own habit as it started to creep back in. Yeah, and I think, I think that's why we, you know, we need eyes on the ground or hands on us or, you know, just like we're helping the horse because we get stuck in our subconscious habit thinking that's okay. Or and when we do find a change, what I'm realizing is the quiet time. If I don't have hands on, if I don't have eyes on the ground, I caught myself because I took the time to find ease and I wasn't in a rush to get something done. So I noticed when the ease was leaving my body. But that takes a lot of like slowing things down to be conscious of that. So I would say quiet time or permission to go slow. Yeah, for some people, it may feel like going from 80 to 25. Yeah. In their nervous system. Yeah. Because they, they've lived at that level up here of whatever you want to call it hamster on the wheel, but taking that time to just arrive, um, arrive in your chair. Where am I in my chair? Where am I when I get on the horse? Um, I think for me is the biggest step towards having a better ride or sitting in a chair better because I have, my body is very aware when I take the time to ask, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, how are you, I, I, how you doing? <laughs> in the absence of somebody looking at me and walking me through it or touching me, like you, like if you put hands on people, I go, okay, that's a very powerful way to do it, but not always available to us. Right. Right. I don't have an AT instructor in my area and I don't get to see you and get hands on very often. So like this is helpful even through Zoom because I at least have eyes on me. Yeah, and I've, I'm, getting, I'm getting much better at seeing things on Zoom than, say, mm -hmm. two months ago. I'm getting critique, just like everybody else is, being able to critique and see even yeah. more that it seems like you're, you know, you're in a much better place than when we started. I, it feels easier. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I had a nap. Like, I yeah. feel more rested, and this whole week I've been feeling really tired like just well yesterday so much but i go okay i did a clinic over the weekend i had a busy monday yesterday i was really tired but like i don't usually lose all my energy 
And that's where I was feeling like just really sluggish and a little stressed because I have a lot to do, but I'm not feeling, ah, but I'm not feeling energetic. <laughs> How do yeah. I get your energy back? So yeah. finding this might help also to ground you a little bit and just find that hip joint while you're talking. See if you can find your voice kind of resonating in your diaphragm more. Yeah, there. Yeah, I have to really inhibit that shortening of my back muscles. I can, yeah. As soon as you start talking, you want, and I'm exaggerating so people yeah. can see, you, you want to go here and then your eyes get big and you're like, you know, so the whole system gets in that, I feel like I have to work real hard. Yeah. Instead of going, oh, wait a minute, here we Little are. child of five loud, rambunctious children, you have to work hard to be heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so can I find... Can I find my voice in my yeah, diaphragm? The one in my family. Yeah. <laughs> so the shortest one, the smallest one, in the middle. And it's like, yeah, I have a whole posture around yes. how to be heard. Yeah. So yeah. So this is really helping you. So you know if you put your hand further back, you'll want to go there to meet it. So wherever you Right on the little button of my hat. So that's helpful. I that, feel the weight of my hand and it actually helps me not shorten my back muscles. I don't know why. That is that opposition reflex I think a lot of people like mm. to respond to, um, whether it's that pushing up or you could be against a wall. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, any type of tactile pressure. Mm. And just you, resting, not pushing. Not pushing, just the weight uh, making of my hand. Yeah, and see now you that. can find this a little bit. It can be a little bit more forward, and letting go. Yeah, there you go. There's your back. Yeah. There's your back when you found a little because you needed to come forward and up a little bit to make that happen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, my, I feel like a bobblehead. That's what we, when I, te <laughs> when I teach little kids, I say, find your bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> they go, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. I wrap it up because I'm yes. on a tight schedule today, but I can say that with ease. Good. Yeah. So look for the easy places. I can say I've got a lot to do today, but that doesn't mean I have to... Well, you know, um, who's our Mead? Mead Andrews' favorite saying, I'll leave with this. I'm at ease with myself and I have time. Ooh, I'm, at I'm at ease with myself, with myself and I have time. And I have time. That's a big one because I'm always late. So <laughs> I have time. You have time. All right. And I right. feel, you don't mind if I post this on the student group? Not at all. Great. It'll be and fun. I'd love to get feedback. Yeah. And so people can comment on this video. And if somebody wants to work with you directly, um, I think they can post on the Facebook group. Okay. And, uh, or we'll get contact information shared within the group. Um, but yeah, very helpful. Cool. Thank you, ma'am. Enjoy your day. We'll do it again. Yeah. Yay. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye.